All right, and we'll continue with uh, shoulder trauma routine. So <clears throat> your routine is going to be um, a neutral rotation. So that's basically not rotating that arm, just getting a, uh, an image the way that it is. Um, if it is, say the hand is external or rotated internal, you're just going to kind of want to leave it the way that it is. Maybe try to put it in that neutral rotation, but depending on what the patient can do. A scap Y and then a transthoracic lateral. Um, that's just if that patient cannot move the affected arm. So your specials are going to be a near method, which we'll talk about, um, an AP apical oblique axial, which we'll talk about um, as we go along here. So neutral rotation, as you can see, um, look at the hand. That's the arm in neutral rotation. Central ray is to the scapulohumeral joint, one inch inferior to the coracoid. And you're not going to rotate the arm, take it as is. And that's why I say take it as is, even if you can't get in this neutral rotation. Just take it the way that it is. Um, epicondyles will be approximately 45 degrees to the IR if you can get it in this neutral. 10 by 12, crosswise grid, expiration, relax the shoulder if possible. So um, normally with, um, say, a really bad trauma, it's going to be supine. Make sure you include your marker up here. Um, <clears throat> this marker should be moved up, so it's in this part of the light field, not down here. You can see that this shoulder um, soft tissue is kind of cutting into that marker a little bit. So always get the marker up here in the corner. Okay, so one inch inferior to the coracoid. So coracoid, one inch inferior to it. Um, AP neutral rotation uh, for a trauma. Relax the shoulder. Um, keep in mind, as we said as well, that you're going to open your light field and it's going to split that jugular notch because you want that clavicle. Okay, so this is going to move. It might be one inch inferior, but it could be about one inch medial as well for your um, central ray. Include the entire shoulder. Uh, make sure that you open up the light field to include the um, uh, scap uh, the SC joint the uh, um, to get the entire clavicle and um, and joint there. So evaluation criteria, your greater turbicle superimposed, your scapulohumeral joint centered. So the scapulohumeral joint centered in your image. It's, it's not really centered here, but close enough. And then in that neutral rotation, you're going to get your, your greater turbicle and your lesser turbicle. Neither one are going to be in profile. Um, so again, include the entire shoulder girdle. You want to include this inferior angle of the scapula and the sternoclavicular joint right there. So your light field is going to have to be open just a little bit more to include all of that. Okay, great slide for evaluation criteria. Uh, transthoracic lateral proximal humerus, the Lawrence method. So transthoracic, we're going through the thor thoracic. Um, it's going to be a breathing technique. Okay, so a long exposure time, about two to three seconds. Your central ray is perpendicular to the surgical neck. So you're at the surgical neck. This is not mid-humerus. It's a little bit higher because you're just doing the shoulder. Okay, Make sure that your, your marker here is in the light field so you're not cutting it off. You're going to use a 10 by 12 lengthwise with a grid. The affected side... Um, to the image receptor and the unaffected arm, you're going to raise it up as much as possible out of the way. If this patient's not able to move this shoulder up and out of the way, you're going to angle 10 to 15 degrees cephalid, and it's going to automatically move that shoulder up and out of the way of the image. So you have a couple of choices there. You're going to want to get it out of the way as much as possible, but if you can't get it up like this, go ahead and throw a 10 to 15 degree angle on that. 
and you'll get a good image as well. So evaluation criteria, these are always good slides to refer back to. So a transthoracic, you're going to get your proximal humerus. It's going to be clearly seen. The humeral head and glenoid cavity is going to be seen. The humeral head is in a neutral rotation. So you can see your humeral head, the head of your humerus here. Um, there's a scapula here. The other humeral head is up here out of the way. So they were able to move their arms. Your clavicle right here. Your greater turbicle, your lesser turbicle, but uh, greater and lesser turbicle, neither one of those are seen in profile because of that neutral rotation. Um, of that shoulder but you're able to see everything and what you're looking for is is there displacement this way or this way for that um, humeral head and then you're looking for fractures anywhere along in here that may be seen um, and may be causing that patient not to be able to move that affected arm watch the marker here you don't want your marker in this anatomy you want this marker up here out of the way in the corner like we've talked about um, and then always designate the side closest to the image receptor if it's the right side or the less left side next to the image receptor so your scap Y you're rotating um, <clears throat> into an anterior oblique or a posterior oblique about 45 to 60 degrees the affected side towards the IR um, in an LPO RPO, it's the unaffected side <clears throat> is going to be rotated away from the IR. So keep in mind, PA is the affected side. Uh, here we go. PA is the affected side. Um, to the IR, okay, and you can see that here. So you've got um, a PA image, which is going to give you an RAO or LAO, is going to be the affected side closest to the IR. In an AP scap Y, it is going to be the affected side is going to be away from the IR. Okay, so away from the IR, uh, PA image is the affected side next to the IR. Okay, so you're going to palpate the superior angle of the scapula and the AC articulation. So AC, the acromion clavicular R, uh, articulation, so the joint. You're going to rotate till the imaginary line between these is perpendicular to the IR. So... Um, this superior angle and this AC joint, you want them lined up pointing at that IR, okay? And it's the same way when you're doing an AP image, you're going to line them up so they're perpendicular to the image receptor. You may do it recumbent supine or AP with the, with the affected side up. Right here is what I explained above, okay? So alternate is palpate medial and lateral borders of the scapula body and rotate till they are superimposed and perpendicular to the IR. So instead of the superior angle and the AC articulation, you are doing the lateral, uh, the medial and lateral borders of the scapula here and here, and you're making sure that they are, sorry, perpendicular to that image receptor. It's going to line that. Um, scapula up. So scap Y lateral for the lateral shoulder and proximal humerus, central ray to the scapular humeral joint, two to two and a half inches below the top of the shoulder. So top of shoulder, two to two and a half inches, 10 by 12 lengthwise with a grid as well. And that's for the lateral shoulder and proximal humerus. <clears throat> This one's showing a dislocation, so it's uh, an anterior dislocation. So this one is right in the socket where it should be. Your evaluation criteria for your scap Y, another good slide to keep in mind. So you're going to show the body of the scapula superimposed on end. 
So you want this nice Y look right here, okay? And this one over here, the chromium and coracoid process are in profile, which is the um, a chromium here in profile and the coracoid here in profile. So coracoid in profile, the acromion in profile. Humeral head and glenoid cavity are superimposed. So the, the head and the glenoid cavity are superimposed, optimal exposure factors. So keep this in mind right here. This is really good to um, make sure that you understand. So humeral head inferior to coracoid with anterior dislocation is the most common. Humeral head inferior to the acromion with posterior dislocation is the other, the other way that it's dislocated. But the most common is the head is inferior to the coracoid, anterior dislocation. All right. So outlet projection, <clears throat> the near method. So near method, outlet projection, specifically demonstrates coracoacromial arch for possible shoulder impingement. Your central ray is 10 to 15 degrees caudad, and you can see this angle, 10 to 15 degrees caudad. Uh, position is for a scapular Y lateral and then angle your central ray. So your position is position for a scap Y and then you just throw this 10 to 15 degrees caudad angle on and into that same uh, central ray, that same positioning spot right there and that's going to get the near method. So the near method is just a scap Y with a 10 to 15 degree caudad angle. Uh, evaluation criteria for the uh, near method, the scap Y lateral projection. You're looking at the supraspinatus outlet is open and in profile right here. Okay, so the supraspinatus uh, CR is perpendicular, and now you're seeing the outlet projection with the near method. So you can see that difference right here as compared to here. So it demonstrates the coracoacromial arch this arch right here, you're not seeing that arch there. So see how this humeral head is up and now this humeral head is projected down. You're coming right into here to view that, okay? So it's throwing that down. You're coming in at an angle down, throws this down, throws this down, and then you can see that arch a little bit better. Optimal exposure factors. AP apical oblique axial, the Garth method. So you're a 45 degree rotation of that patient. So the affected side is to the uh, image receptor. You are, your patient is about 45 degrees. Your central ray is coming right in there to that uh, scapulohumeral joint. So 45 oblique, affected side is towards the IR. Your CR um, is 45 caudad as it comes down so it's a 45 degree um, caudad angle on your central ray. The central ray is to the scapulohumeral joint. You can see that scapulohumeral joint right there. That's where your central ray is coming to 10 by 12 lengthwise and a grid. So 45 degrees caudad 45 oblique affected side towards the IR for the patient. It's going to throw that humerus and the humeral head down, and you're going to be better able to visualize that uh, uh, scapulohumeral joint. So the humeral head and glenoid cavity and neck of free are free of superimposition. So you've got the neck, the head, the scapulohumeral joint free of superimposition. Scapulohumeral joint is centered to the image receptor and then optimal exposure factors. So AP and AP axial clavicle, AP and AP axial. So they're both AP, it's just one has an axial angle on it, 15 to 30 degrees perpendicular to the mid clavicle, angle more for asthenic patients. So the thinner the patient, the more angle. The thicker the patient, the less angle. So you can say that this is thin, so 30 is a T, um, 
15 you can say is um, F for fat, E for extra large, whichever one you want to do. So the AP for everybody, CR is perpendicular to the clavicle. Your 40 inch SID for both of them, um, 70, 75 KV, and you're coning down to the clavicle. So the clavicle kind of runs like that. So you want to make sure that you are open, um, superior and inferior enough to get that um, clavicle. As you do the AP and you've got your central ray, your central ray is going to stay the same. So where you're angling to for the center is the same. You're just angled up either that 15 or that 30 degrees to that mid clavicle. Expose on suspended inspiration. So AEC is not recommended, so you'll turn the AEC off, set your technique. Um, expose on suspended inspiration. So deep breath in, hold your breath. It elevates the clavicle. Uh, so you want to do that, especially with the angle. With the angle, when you suspend on inspiration, it pushes that clavicle up, and that's what you want. So keep that in mind because the breathing technique is different for the clavicle. Everything else was on expiration. This one is take a deep breath in, hold your breath, make that exposure. So when you're setting them up, and you find your central ray, make them take a deep breath in, you may have to adjust it just a little bit. So evaluation criteria, the entire clavicle, you have SC to AC joints, so you want the entire clavicle, four-sided collimation, side to side, top and bottom, optimal exposure factors, and then the AP axial, the most important thing is you need to see more of the clavicle above the ribs. So you want to see over half of that clavicle above the ribs. This is the first rib here and you have just this little bit of the clavicle that's laying over top of it. So the majority of this clavicle is imaged above the ribs. So you can see where this on an axial it has moved this clavicle up into this position up here and that's what you want it to do. So AP and your axial is going to move your clavicle, most of it above the ribs. AC joints, so acromioclavicular joints here and here is with and without weights. So you're going to do one with them just standing there and then you're going to give them weights to hold and then take another one. So with weights and then without weights, bilateral. So you're going to be using a 14 by 17. It's going to be crosswise and then you're going to collimate your light um, into that AC area. So 72 inches, a grid, and then on expiration. Take a deep breath in, blow it all the way out, and then that's when you're going to make that exposure. Okay? So no angle, it is perpendicular. Alternate supine position. Um, place the patient on their back on the table and then once again you're going to be 40 degrees and you're going to be into that uh, into the AC joints um, small collimation uh, you're not going to collimate um, the entire length you just need that 14 by 17 to get the width for that patient so evaluation criteria, both AC joints, and this is why you need the 14 by 17 to get the width on here. Otherwise, you're going to miss uh, having both AC joints on there. You can see this one has width weights, and you're showing those AC joints are open. This is without weights, and the AC joints are a little bit more closed. So both AC joints demonstrated no motion, so make sure the patient holds still. Optimal exposure factors, correct markers visible, um, close collimation is evident. And a lot of times, um, texts do put both markers on, so a right and a left, um, just depending on who you work with and where you're at. It doesn't hurt to put both markers on. Just make sure whichever marker you put on, um, it is the correct side, the correct marker. 
AP scapula. So a breathing technique, and the reason you need the breathing technique is because the scapula is closest to the image receptor. The ribs are overlaying that scapula. So you need a breathing technique. <clears throat> Your central ray is a two inches inferior to the coracoid plus two inches medial from the lateral border. So coracoid, two inches down, and then two inches from the medial border of the scapula to get that central ray. You'll use a 10 by 12 lengthwise with a grid around 70 to 80 kV, a 40 inch SID, so you're gonna have a close SID, and then you want that arm away, so abduct the arm 90 degrees to pull scapula off of the ribs. If you can do this, that's great. If the patient needs to do this, that works as well. You can also just bring the arm out um, as long as it's away from the body is all you're looking at. So just judge your patient to see what they can do. If they can bring that arm up and out of the way like that, or like I said, they can bring it this way down next to them or at least away. Okay. If you can't get the 90 degrees, depending on your patient's mobility. Evaluation criteria, the entire scapula, so you have the inferior border, you have the superior angle, you have the glenoid humeral, you have your uh, axillary border and your vertebral medial border. Lateral border of scapula is free of ribs and lungs, so this lateral border, the ribs are free of that lateral border. Optimal exposure factors, the ribs have been blurred so you can see um, that scapula through those ribs. So for the body of the scapula, lateral scapula is a scap Y. That's all it is. Lateral scapula, scap Y, <clears throat> uh, across the arm, across the chest. You're just trying to get that um, the affected side, that arm out of the way. So bring it over to the unaffected side as much as possible. See central rays to the mid vertebral border. So mid vertebral border, you're still lining up your medial border and axillary border, or your um, <clears throat> your AC and your uh, vertebral border uh, perpendicular to that image receptor. From PA, you rotate 45 to 60 degrees, just like a scap Y, until the imaginary line. The superior angle of the scapula and the AC is perpendicular. It's essentially the same position as the scap Y lateral trauma shoulder. And I don't think um, as long as you can do a scap Y, you're going to be fine on a lateral scapula. It is basically the same image. <clears throat> lateral scapula. For upper scapula, um, a chromium or coracoid, you're going to let the arm hang down by the side or place behind the lower back, um, slightly abducted. So this, again, just depends on what they're looking at and what they're most interested in. Is it the acromion and the coracoid, or is it a um, an overall uh, general study of the scapula? So this is more for the inferior angle and the body. This one is more for the, um, the acromion and the coracoid and your scapular spine. So just pay attention to what they're ordering, why they're ordering it, and where um, the majority of the pain is for the patient. Uh, lateral scapula recumbent position. This is just like having a patient stand up at the wall bucky for a scap Y, except they're on their side. It's the same centering, um, the same breathing technique, the, the same uh, imaging. Make sure that you include your marker in the light field and um, you will get that scapula Y. And then this is the body of the scapula in profile, the lateral scapula, the inferior angle. You have this uh, the main body of the scapula, and then your Y right here. So you've got the borders of the scapula are superimposed. It's free of superimposition of the ribs. The ribs are moved away from the scapula. Your arm is elevated to demonstrate the scapular body. So the arm's coming out here. It's elevated away from that scapular body. 
So some radiographs for critique and most of these uh, images for critique are going to be in your critique review already explained. So as we critique this um, AP clavicle for positioning and centering errors, we can tell that our center is about right here. So our collimation is not correct. We're not centered to the mid clavicle. Um, and we don't have our shoulder relaxed. We also don't have a marker. So repeatable errors for um, external rotation. So we have a marker. Um, there for this it is a little over penetrated so the um, the technical factors were a little bit high and then if we're doing an external rotation um, we are not seeing our greater turbicle so this to me looks like it's more of a neutral rotation on that arm so we're not meeting the external rotation for the image that we are trying to take. This one here, uh, which AP rotation position of the shoulder is demonstrated on each image? So each one of these images, we should know that this is an AP shoulder, AP shoulder, AP shoulder. This is internal or external rotation. External rotation shows the greater turbicle. Internal rotation shows the lesser turbicle. And the neutral rotation, doesn't show either the internal or the external, uh, the greater or lesser um, turbicle. So that's what we have here is the external, my good E, external, internal, and neutral rotation. Okay? So a little bit of a quiz me. An injury of the anterior inferior aspect of the glenoid labrum is termed, uh, which one are we looking for here? <clears throat> Should be the Bankert lesion. Okay, so which of the following AP proximal shoulder projections will demonstrate the lesser turbicle in profile? So we need the lesser in profile. So external, we know that that is the greater. The neutral rotation is neither one of them. Internal rotation is the one that shows the lesser turbicle. Internal rotation for the lesser turbicle. <clears throat> Which of the following projections will best demonstrate a possible heel sacs defect? So this goes back to the positioning um, for the Hills sacs. Make sure that you uh, refresh that. So inferior superior axial projection with exaggerated external rotation or the PA transaxillary Hobbs modification, posterior oblique Gracie method, tangential projection Fisk method. We know that it's the exaggerated external rotation for the Hills sacks. <clears throat> so how much is the body rotation for a posterior oblique position for the Gracie method? 5 to 8, 10 to 15, 20 to 25, 35 to 45. We know that it's 35 to 45 for that Gracie method. Okay, so make sure that you review those and understand um, how much you're obliquing for the patient. Um, what anatomy of the shoulder is best demonstrated with a tangential projection FISC method? So the FISC method <clears throat> is it the clavicle, the proximal humerus, the intertubecular groove, or the glenoid cavity? And it is the intertubecular groove right there for the FISC modification. Make sure you go back and review those. How much should the central ray be angled for an AP axial projection of the clavicle on an asthenic patient? So if you remember asthenic patient, we talked about that. So thinner patients or heavier patients, the angle is going to be different. So for asthenic, is it 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 
20 degrees or 30 degrees and we know that asthenic is 30 degrees so right there 30 degrees for asthenic patients so last one here the use of automatic exposure control AEC is not recommended for the AP projection of the scapula is that true or false and it is true AEC is not recommended for the AP projection of the scapula all right, that's the end of it. If you guys have any questions, we will get back to it on uh, our next meeting. Uh, hopefully you review these. Have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.